This evening's homily is the second part of the Sermon of the Knowledge of Holy Scripture, taken from the homilies. The first part of this sermon, which exhorteth to the knowledge of Holy Scripture, was declared wherefore the knowledge of the same is necessary and profitable to all men, and that by the true knowledge and understanding of Scripture, the most necessary points of our duty toward God and our neighbors are also known. Now, as concerning the same matter, you shall hear what followeth. If we profess Christ, why be we not ashamed to be ignorant in his doctrine, seeing that every man is ashamed to be ignorant in that learning which he professeth? That man is ashamed to be called a philosopher, which readeth not the book of philosophy, and to be called a lawyer and an astronomer or physician that is ignorant in the books of law, astronomy, and physic. Now, can any man then say that he professeth Christ and his religion if he will not apply himself as far forth as he can and may conveniently, to read and hear, and so to know the books of Christ's gospel and doctrine? And, although other sciences be good and to be learned, yet no man can deny, but this is the chief, and passeth all other, incomparably. What excuse shall we therefore make at the last day before Christ that delight to read or hear men's fantasies and inventions more than his most holy gospel? And will find no time to do that which chiefly above all things we should do, and will rather read other things than that for which we ought rather to leave reading off of all other things? Let us therefore apply ourselves as far forth as we can have time and leisure to know God's word by diligent hearing and reading thereof. As many as profess God and have faith and trust in him, but they that have no good affection to God's word to color this their fault, allege commonly too vain and feigned excuses. Some go about to excuse them by their own frailness and fearfulness, saying that they dare not read Holy Scripture, lest through their ignorance they should fall into any error. Other pretend that the difficulty to understand it and the hardness thereof is so great that it is meet to be read only of clerks and learned men. As touching the first, ignorance of God's word is the cause of all error, as Christ himself affirmed to the Sadducees, saying that they erred because they knew not the scripture. How should they then eschew error that will still be ignorant? And how should they come out of ignorance that will not read nor hear that thing which should give them knowledge? He that now hath most knowledge was at the first ignorant, yet he forbear not to read, for fear he should fall into error. But he diligently read, lest he should remain in ignorance, and through ignorance in error. And if you will not know the truth of God, a thing most necessary for you, lest you fall into error, by the same reason you may then still lie and never go, lest if you go you fall into the mire, nor eat any good meat, lest you take a surfeit, nor sow your corn, nor labor in your occupation, nor use your merchandise, for fear you lose your seed, your labor, your stock. And so by that reason, it should be best for you to lie idly and never to take in hand to do any manner of good thing, lest peradventure some evil thing may chance thereof. And if you be afraid to fall into any error by reading of Holy Scripture, I shall show you how you may read it without danger of error. 
read it humbly, with a meek and lowly heart, to the intent that you may glorify God and not yourself with the knowledge of it. And read it not without daily praying to God that he would direct your reading to good effect and take upon you to expound it no further than you can plainly understand it. For, as St. Augustine saith, the knowledge of Holy Scripture is a great, large, and high place, but the door is very low, so that the high and arrogant man cannot run in, but he must stoop low and humble himself that shall enter into it. Presumption and arrogancy is the mother of all error, and humility needeth to fear no error. For humility will only search to know the truth. It will search and will bring together one place with another, and where it cannot find out the meaning, it will pray. It will ask of other than no and will not presumptuously and rashly define anything which it knoweth not. Therefore, the humble man may search any truth boldly in the scripture, without any danger of error. And if he be ignorant, he ought the more to read and to search holy scripture, to bring him out of ignorance. I say not nay, but a man may prosper with only hearing, but he may much more prosper with both hearing and reading. This have I said as touching the fear to read through ignorance of the person, and concerning the hardness of Scripture, he that is so weak that he is not able to brook strong meat, yet he may suck the sweet and tender milk and defer the rest until he wax stronger and come to more knowledge. For God receiveth the learned and unlearned and casteth away none, but is indifferent unto all. And the scripture is full as well of low valleys, plain ways, and easy for every man to use and to walk in as also of high hills and mountains, which few men can climb. And whosoever giveth his mind to holy scripture with diligent study and burning desire, it cannot be, saith St. Chrysostom, that he should be left without help. For either God Almighty will send him some godly doctor to teach him, as he did to instruct Eunuchus, a nobleman of Ethiop, and treasurer unto Queen Candace, who having affection to read the scripture, although he understood it not, yet for the desire that he had unto God's word, God sent his apostle Philip to declare unto him the true sense of the scripture that he read, or else, if we lack, a learned man to instruct and teach us, yet God himself from above will give light unto our minds and teach us those things which are necessary for us and wherein we be ignorant. And in another place, Chrysostom saith, that man's humane and worldly wisdom or science needeth not the understanding of scripture, but the revelation of the Holy Ghost who inspireth the true meaning unto them, with that humility and diligence do search therefore. He that asketh shall have, and he that seeketh shall find. He that knocketh shall have the door open, saith St. Matthew. If we read once, twice, or thrice, and understand not, let us not cease so but still continue reading, praying, and asking of other, and so by still knocking at the last, the door shall be open, as St. Augustine saith. Although many things in the scripture be spoken in obscure mysteries, 
Yet there is nothing spoken under dark mystery in one place, but the selfsame thing in other places is spoken more familiarly and plainly to the capacity both of learned and unlearned. And those things in the scripture that be plain to understand and necessary for salvation, every man's duty is to learn them, to print them in memory, and effectually to exercise them. And as for the dark mysteries, to be counted, to be ignorant, to be contented, to be ignorant in them, until such time as it shall please God to open these things unto him. In the mean season, if he lack either aptness or opportunity, God will not impute it to his folly, but yet it behooveth not that such as be apt should set aside reading, because some other be inept to read, nevertheless, for the hardness of such places, the reading of the whole ought not to be set apart. And briefly to conclude, as St. Augustine saith, by the scripture, all men be amended. Weak men be strengthened, strong men be comforted, so that surely none be enemies to the reading of God's word. But such as either be so ignorant that they know not how wholesome a thing it is, or else be so sick that they hate the most comfortable medicine that should heal them, or so ungodly that they should wish the people still to continue in blindness and ignorance of God. Thus, we have briefly touched some part of the commodities of God's holy word, which is one of God's chief and principal benefits given and declared to mankind here in earth. Let us thank God heartily for this is great and special gift, beneficial favor, and fatherly providence. Let us be glad to revive this precious gift of our Heavenly Father, to receive it well. Let us hear, read, and know these holy rules, injunctions, and statutes of our Christian religion. And upon that we have made profession to God at our baptism. Let us fear and reverence, lay up in the chest of our hearts these necessary and fruitful lessons. Let us night and day muse and have meditation and contemplation in them. Let us ruminate and, as it were, chew the cud, that we may have the sweet juice, spiritual effect, marrow, honey, kernel, taste, comfort and consolation of them. Let us stay quiet and certify our conscience with the most infallible certainty, truth, and perpetual assurance of them. Let us pray to God, the only author of these heavenly studies, that we may speak, think, believe, live, and depart hence according to the wholesome doctrine and verities of them. And by that means, in this world, we shall have God's defense, favor, and grace with the unspeakable solace of peace and quietness of conscience. And after this miserable life, we shall enjoy the endless bliss and glory of heaven, which is he grant to us all that died for us all, Jesus Christ, to whom with the Father and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory both now and everlastingly. Amen.